Hey everybody, it's Carolyn from Crop Candy Scrapbooking. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good Friday. Um, it's a little rainy here on the East Coast where I am and kind of dreary, but um, has made the cicadas subside a little bit. So uh, I don't know if you all are aware, but if you're on the East Coast, you definitely know. Um, but uh, we've been invaded with, uh, what do they call it? Um, brood X with the cicadas and the cicadas come out every 17 years so this is uh, 2020 2021 is a cicada year they came out like um, I want to say mid May and they're supposed to be around until 4th of July maybe later I hope not because they're really weird bugs they're like this big and <laughs> They're disgusting, and um, their whole purpose is to mate and then die. Um, and they're uh, they're so loud. And I think like our local news said that they recorded uh, cicadas at ninety decibels. I mean, they're screechy, and then they do this weird modulating thing. It's like, oh my god, this. I mean, this is my third experience, probably fourth, but the, from what I remember. This is my third experience with um, the cicadas, and this is probably the worst one. Brood X is the worst. Anyway, enough about talking about bugs. Hey, Steve. Yes, 1987. Exactly. That's when I <clears throat> graduated from high school, and um, I remember we were standing outside after the ceremony in our caps and gowns, and those things were flying all over us. It, ugh. Anyway, I'm getting PTSD from thinking about it. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, welcome to uh, Crop Candy Live. If you are a follower of me on uh, YouTube or here on Facebook, thank you. Thank you for dropping by today. Um, if you are new to Crop Candy Scrapbooking, we are all about simple scrapbooking. I love uh, teaching scrapbooking techniques to people. Um, I try to make it as simple and easy as possible. I'm a firm believer in using sketches to start off your layouts, and that's what we're going to do today. And also like using die cuts and stickers and stamping to add a little extra flavor to the layout. So we're going to play with all of those techniques in the time we have today. Um, if you are interested in any of that and you want to learn more, go to cropcandy.net. That is my website. And uh, you can I have a blog there. You can learn all about these different techniques that I've been talking to you about about today. And if you visit, uh, please sign up for my email list and I will give you, when you sign up, you get a free ebook of scrapbook sketches and card sketches. So that's my gift to you for signing up for my email list. I'm supposed to send out an email tomorrow. That would be Saturday. I have not written it yet. So if you sign up, <laughs> If you sign up pretty soon, you will be able to catch that June email. I've got a lot of good stuff coming up uh, this month. And speaking of sketches, I just want to uh, mention to you that July I will be doing a sketch series. So all everything you want to know about sketches, if you're new to sketches, this would be a great opportunity for you to check out that series. And if you're you're already using sketches, then you know, hopefully you'll get some new techniques or, you know, comment on the posts and share what you already know. And next week, next month's Facebook Live, I'll be uh, probably doing a one sketch, two looks. I've done that before here. So um, we'll be doing that again next month. All right. So today we're going to talk about using um, clear stamps and thin cut dies. Some of you are already familiar with each of those things. Um, but I'm going to show you today how to use them together. So you can get sets of stamps that coordinate or come with thin cut dies. And thin cut dies are used to make die cuts. You would use a machine like a, uh, a cuddle bug or a big shot or um, the Gemini. Actually, somebody mentioned the Gemini um, uh, die cutting machine on the favorite scrapbooking tools post. I cannot remember who said it, but... Uh, today is or this month is my birthday month and so I'm thinking about getting that um, as a birthday gift to myself. I am a Cricut user. Cricut as you know is all electronic. All the images are in the cloud but I do like to use thin cuts because 
um, you can get the coordinated coordinated stamp images with that. So let's let me just go ahead and show you. I'm going to go to my demo table real quick, so you can um, see what I'm talking about. So this particular set, this is from Close to My Heart, and it's it's a scrapbook and sparklers is the name of the set, and these are the stamps that you get with it which is, I love these. This is uh, like a barbecue grilling theme and we're, the, the layout we're making today is a barbecue grilling theme. And here are the die cuts that go with that. So what you can do is you, you have your, your stamp sh or your shape, like in this case, the grill, and then you can stamp on it. Um, the cool thing about these uh, stamps is they tell you and I'm going to bring it up closer to the camera. If you see the outline around some of these images, that means there's a corresponding die cut that goes with it, right? So this little watermelon slice here, you see here, here's the corresponding um, slice that goes with that. So today we're going to show you how to stamp or cut or cut then stamp. There's two ways to use these. And then we're going to actually go ahead and apply the elements to our layout. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so let me slide this over because that is actually for our layout. Actually, I'm going to move it so that it doesn't fall on the floor. <laughs> and I've cut some papers, or I'm sorry, I've cut some cardstock already so that you don't have to see me trimming online. Okay, let's pull that out. And as you can see, these things are really, really, really thin, right? Let me just hold it up. So you can see how, how thin they are, but they cut really nicely. All right, so let's start with, uh, how about we do this grill piece, okay? So I'm gonna set that aside. So there's two ways you can do this. The first way I'm gonna show you is to actually uh, cut this out on our, well, in my case, it's the cuddle bug. So I have my cuddle bug right here. Pop this open. I know this is old school because most people don't use the cuddle bugs anymore, but like I said, I'm in the market for a new cutting machine, so that's what I'm going to use, or that's what I'm going to get, but for now, we're going to use that. So I've got my base, I'm going to put my shim on, and then on these, um, there's two sides, right? So there's a ridged side and then there's like a flat side if you can see that we're going to use the ridge side so i'm going to put that face down onto my platform put this on top and then oops i have my machine the other way i need the crank facing me and then we're going to pull it in here and then i don't even think they make the cuddle bug anymore i think it's been discontinued I also have a big shot, but I think I need to get new plates for that or new platforms for that. Okay. And we're gonna just gonna set this aside. I love this. I just want to mention that this is a mag a magnetic uh, carrier sheet, so you don't have to worry about losing your um, your your metal okay so that's this is the shape that we get it's a cute little grill and now I'm gonna stamp so I'm gonna use as you know a lot of grills are black on the top and then the legs are silver or chrome so I'm going to actually create that effect I'm gonna get my stamp from the carrier sheet it off. 
Okay, I'm going to put my cut onto this foam. Um, the reason why we use the foam is because it helps you to get a better impression. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see closer. See what I'm doing? Okay. Put my stamp onto my uh, acrylic block, like so. And then I'm going to um, get my stamp ink. I like to ink the lighter colors first and then put the darker color on top because I don't care if a little bit of the light color gets on to the dark color, but I do mind if the dark smudges over into the light color. Okay. So in this case, because I'm normally, I would just, if I was doing all one color, I would just ink that way. But because I'm doing the two colors, I'm going to apply the ink pad to the stamp. And I'm just going to stamp over that. Again, I don't care if a little bit of the light, this is like a gray, dark gray. I don't care if the, the gray gets over into where I'm supposed to do the black because it's going to cover it up. And then I've got my blank black ink pad and I'm just going over the top of the grill with that. And just hold it up so you can see what kind of coverage we're getting here. Okay. And then, and I'm probably going to stand up so you, hopefully you don't see the top of my head. I'm actually going to, sit, because this is clear, I can see through. I'm going to try to position my stamp over top of the die cut and then press down. And here's what I get. And that is so cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so that's one option. This is again the cut first, stamp later option. Okay, now I'm going to show, I'm going to set him aside over here. And now I'm going to show you the stamp first cut later. Okay. So let's go ahead and use my, I'm just going to cut this off. Go back to my paper. And I'm going to repeat the same process. I'm going to ink the bottom with the silver or naturally it's like a dark gray, like a charcoal. And ink the top with my black. Oh, I need more coverage. So, so. there we go. Hmm. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna stamp onto my cardstock. Okay, got a little white there, but we'll just pretend that this particular grill is old and weathered. So, <laughs> so you, I don't know if you could see that little streak there, but I'm not going to worry about it. it. It's fine. All right, now I'm going to, I'm just going to set aside my ink so I don't get it on anything. Okay, and I'm going to cut this. And you'll see why in a second, why I decided to cut that. And I put my stamp over there. Okay, remove this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my platform. Okay, and then I'm going to get my die again. And remember I told you there's the the ridge side, which is the side that cuts, and then the smooth side. I'm actually going to take the ridge side, put it down on top of my stamped image. I'm going to position it so that it's kind of in between those images. 
or the image is in between like the the shape of the die like so okay then I'm gonna take a piece of washi tape got some glitter washi tape because I like glitter and I'm just gonna tack it doesn't matter where just make sure that you know the die is attached in place and then I'll take my sandwich make my sandwich put this over here bring the cuddle bug back I've got it zoomed in so, so you can see the image but like the cuddle bug looks super big and then we'll just crank and cut set this aside and gently lift up and there you have it that is stamping first and then cutting you know there's no right or wrong way to do this I think it just depends on your comfort level so you may be more feel more comfortable like if you're really persnickety you might decide that you know because you can see here it's like it's not perfect but again it doesn't matter um, you may decide that you like cutting then stamping which is this one or you like stamping then cutting right it's really up to you you get the same end result um, like I said there's no right or wrong way it's really what you're comfortable with try both um, I used to do the stamp then or I'm sorry the cut then stamp and then I kind of started to like the stamp then cut you do have to make sure with both that you know you position your image um, so that they cut pretty cleanly but I think either or um, works fine you know and it may depend on the size of your um, image as well these are kind of big so you know if we get into the smaller images it might make more sense to try it another way all right I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can go back to our original size here there we go okay so that is the that's that stamp set again um, it looks like this this is the outside you can get it from my website if you're interested uh, my online store cropcandy.net slash shop and we're gonna play with some more images from this stamp set in a second um, as we put together the layout you'll you'll start to see how I use some of them on on my page so I'm gonna just put this aside and then we're gonna get Let's get started on the actual layer. All right, so today, as I mentioned, we are using a sketch as the base. We're using um, a sketch from Make It From Your Heart, which is volume five, which is a Close To My Heart book, Close To My, and it really goes in a notebook. I just pulled it out. I just have my pages clipped. But this particular book um, has a variety of sketch layouts, that you can try and uh, it has the four color um, samples of layouts made with the sketch so today uh, we're gonna make this layout here okay it has six photos and it mixes a variety oops, mixes a variety of pattern papers um, so you have three photos here, three photos here, you have your staggered pattern paper, and then all you need to do is add embellishments. And here's some examples over here of what people have created using this particular layout. And like I said, this is from Make It From Your Heart, Volume 5, which is a sketch layout book. So if you're interested in sketches, you should definitely check that out. And because it is Volume 5, I'm, sh I'm sure you figured out that there are other volumes available. So um, Check it out on cropcandy.net slash shop. All right, I am using 
papers from the uh, Stars and Sparklers uh, paper packet as well as the mix-ins packet which is, mix ins are kind of neat. They're um, pattern papers that aren't part of the paper packets, but actually match with the paper packet. So I'm gonna show you a picture really quick of, so this is Stars and Sparklers, and you can see um, <clears throat> we'll be using this one here, or um, the, the, uh, the stars and the flowers. And then we have the um, mix-ins. So uh, all the mix-ins are double-sided papers. This is the front. We're, we're gonna be using the this right here tag, which is cool. You get this sheet of tags and then you get the double-sided papers. And these um, papers perfectly match with, the, um, with each other, right? So, just to give you a sample. Like, so this is two different paper packets and I like mixing pattern, pattern papers to give like visual interest to your page. And it's pretty easy um, when you use patterns that coordinate with each other. So I think you've seen previous videos and I'll link to it where I've, I did a video on mixing pattern papers and showing you how to do it. When you use items that come from the same paper packet, it's really easy because if they're double-sided papers, there's no question about whether something matches. But the beauty of these mix-ins is that um, Close to My Heart designed them to go with um, almost virtually any other paper packet. So you can't really go wrong with mixing pattern papers, okay? So let's go ahead, um, in the interest of time, as you can see, I already cut my pages or papers, and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these on to the page as soon as I find my adhesive tape roller. And it's so funny because every time I do a video, I think I have my, oh, here they are. <laughs> They're like right next, right next to me. <laughs> every time I do a video, I think I have all my items together and I don't, I never do. So, okay. So this is uh, just a basic 12 by 12 um, layout. And this base cardstock, I like to use solid papers. I don't know if you've heard me mention this before. I like to use solid papers as my base um, because, oh, actually, I don't want to put that down first. Sorry, I want to put these down first because these go over here and I'm going to lay out from right to left. Um, I, actually, I like to use... Uh, solid cardstock as my layout base so that I can build pattern papers on top of it. Now, um, according to the pattern, it says I need to go one and a half inches down. That's why I like laying out on these because I can do measurements. So one and a half inches down from 12 is 10 and a half. And so I just use this mat here as my guide to do that. I'm actually going to move this piece of paper over there. All right. let's, let's move that so you guys can see better. All right, so that's one and a half inches down, right? Ten and a half mark. Okay. And then I start building backwards. So the next one that comes up is this black polka dot. This is the mix-in. These two are mix-ins. I'll let you know when it's a mix-in versus when it's stars and sparklers. And this is three quarter inches down. So that would be 12 minus three quarters is 11.25 or 11 and a quarter. So that goes right about there. And you just butt it up against there. Okay. Next we have this, this is Stars and Sparklers. This one goes one and a half inches down, so 12 minus one and a half is what, 10 and a half again? Ish, somewhere around there. Yeah, 
whatever that blue is. Okay. And then we have our final, which I've already glued, and that's three quarter, and that's going to line up with the black one here, black polka dot. Voila. Okay, so that's our our left side so far. Okay. Then I've cut out these red um, pieces of cardstock for my photo mats. So I put those down. And that's five inches down. So 12 minus five is seven. And I think it's about a quarter of an inch from, if that, from the left. These photo mats are three and a quarter by three and a quarter to accommodate three by three photos. Okay, and then this guy goes three inches down, so 12 minus three is nine. And they're about a quarter of an inch apart. So we have that. And then I've got my final one for this page. And it's five inches down. And it's flush with this edge. So that's about seven inches. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing for the right side of the page. And again, I'm working from this side out. Now, I'm going to bring this back for a second because these two blue strips are supposed to line up. I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, so there you have that. And then I'm going to go ahead and build the other ones. So this is this is mixin, this is mixin, and this is mixin. As I mentioned, they're double sided, so there you go. And this kind of follows the same pattern. So three quarters down, we said 11.25. So that would be about there. And then we have the hearts. That's one and a half down. So that lines up with this guy again. This is Stars and Sparklers. And this one is three quarter inches, so this one. Going to get to my photo mats again. And this one is three inches down from the flush with the edge, so that's there. Next one is five inches down, which would be at the seven inch mark. So about here. And then my final is three inches down, lines up with the other one. Now, 
these are all three inch by three inch photos you could easily um, make these you know four by six or yeah four by six or three by four you can customize them to however you want and whatever depending on the photos that you have so don't feel wedded to the sketch I mean that's the good thing about the sketches is that you can pretty much you know make them however you want so now I'm gonna add my photos all right and the story behind these photos is that my husband and I like to grill and it is officially grilling season here and uh, summer right and we grill not only in the summer but we've we've grilled in the winter because you know if you want a steak in November it's cold outside just put on a coat and, and get grill your steak we don't have an indoor grill so we have to do with what we have to do um, so these are just various pictures and it's not in order chronological order it's just various pictures that I've captured over the years of food <laughs> folks and fun um, that goes here actually this I made a mistake oh, I'm not gonna bother with that that was really where my journaling was supposed to go but actually it looks okay with the picture there so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go ahead and put my journaling here and the journaling is just a short paragraph about how much we like to grill now one of the pictures has nothing to do with grilling sort of ish but it has to do with fire and like grilling is cooking with fire so this is fire this is actually my sister-in-law who uh, hipped us to grilled peeps or um, uh, like roasted peeps so you know how you roast marshmallows over um, a pit she likes to roast peeps and so this is a picture of peeps I just added it because it has to do with cooking with fire okay <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and add, build up on this page now that we have our foundation. I'm going to take a quick sip of water and start adding the elements. And like I said, some of most of these elements I've already uh, created in advance in the interest of time. All right, so the first thing is I've sort of created little titles for <clears throat> the various areas of the layout so this one is fire up the grill and this is from the stamp set so remember I told you I was going to be using some of the elements from the stamp set that I demoed earlier and I'm going to use one of the uh, Let's use this one. I'm going to use, because I like the little scratch here. It just looks more authentic. And I'm going to put foam squares on the grill because I find that it adds a nice little pop-up to your, your page. And foam squares, you can get them in large, small, medium. They're usually in the adhesive section um, of your craft store. I love that grill. It's just so cute. Um, <laughs> and then I've got a little bit of journaling here. So you can see I have, I'm using these little phrases as part of my journaling or to support my journaling. Um, that's a simple, if you don't like to write or you don't have, you know, you're like, ah, I can't tell a story like that. Then you can use these little, what I call bullet journaling, because it's just a, like a bulleted sentence instead of like this whole paragraph here. So you could conceivably have substituted this with another photo and then use 
the stamps and your own handwriting to help tell the story. Right. Here's another image from, I think I want that there, from the stamp set. And this particular tag here is from that Mixon's paper packet. Remember I showed you it had um, a page where it's just like tags and flags and different shapes like that. That uh, is from that set. And I'm actually going to foam dot that guy too. These ribs are so good. My husband makes really good ribs. Really, really good ribs. Okay. Then I've got another little flag. This is also from the um, Mixon's paper packet tag sheet. And it says roasted peeps, and you know where that's going. I'm using a glue pen for some of these smaller things. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's one more thing for this page. And that is a banner. So let me show you this on the uh, stamp set again. Just looking for my stamp set. So you have this little swoop thing that you can put your uh, banner on and then you have these banner pieces here. So let's go ahead and make a banner piece. I forgot that I was going to show you how to do that because I want you to see how I did this. So I've got, I cut the letters, I stamped with a light ink and then I stamped again in black on top. Okay. And then I'm going to have the swoop go down. Oh, here we go. So I already stamped or already um, cut and, and inked this banner. Let me just show you again. It's this one right here. It's like a solid stamp. And then I'm going to show you how to just stamp on top of that. With the letter. And wouldn't you know it, I did not pull out that stamp set. So you're going to hear me in the background. Go to my stamp. <laughs> Go to my stamp bin and pull this out. Every time I try to prepare for my videos, inevitably I forget something because that's the way it goes. It's Murphy's Law, right? All right. I have to remember what stamp set it came from. Okay. An oldie but goodie. This is an oldie, oldie. All right. Sorry if I... Hi, Regan! Oh yeah, that banner's cool. Let me, sh I, I gotta show you all how to do it. So, okay. Ta-da. Here's the, the blue ink. Let me just show you real quick how I did that because I think it's a useful technique to know. All right. So we're going to pretend that we're going to do that, what I showed you earlier, the um, cut then stamp. We're going to pretend that in this case we're going to do stamp then cut. So I'm inking and then I'm doing second generation stamping. So I'm just inking to get rid of the first load of ink and then I stamp again so I can get a lighter version. 
and that's the version I'm going to cut. And the reason why I did that is so that the letter that I'm stamping on there will show up. So let me put this aside. And let's pretend we already cut that out and we're going to go back to this one. Okay, I'm going to get my black ink here, set those aside, get my block. I'm using this stamp set with tiny letters, an oldie but goodie, and I need a, a U for yum. I don't know. That over there. I don't have my little tiny one inch block because that would be perfect for that. Okay, loaded it up and then just center and stamp. That's what I get. And then what I would do at this point is um, if I had already. Uh, like if in this instance, I would just, the other instance, I would have stamped on here and then run it through the machine to cut it. But like I said, I already pre-cut that. So we're good to go there. All right, I'm going to set this stuff aside. And come back to my layout. And what I want to do is just to create a banner over these photos right here, like so. And that's what that, this little swoop thing would be used for. Which I thought I cut out and I cannot find. Why? Because I'm on video and when I need it, it's not available. I have no idea where that thing is. And I call myself preparing. <laughs> Uh, well, here's the deal, guys. I'm not going to cut it out because this is unfortunately one of those ones. I wish with this stamp set that they had actually made it one of the, the thin cut things because then, you know, it, it's, it's so intricate to cut it and um, it, it would take too long. So I'm just going to add it on later. And when I show you, I'm going to take a picture of the finished layout after we're done and you'll see what the whole thing looks like with the banner. So let's just pretend, but because it is going to be a banner, I'm going to use my pop dots again to make this stand off from the page. And because it's thin, I can just make those, make my little um, banner string stamp uh, hook in underneath of that without any issue. I could also omit that and create my own string. You know, like my, my, use like um, twine or something or baker's twine. That actually might look better. I might do that. I might find some baker's twine and just string it and make it look like a real banner as opposed to a stamped banner. All right, so that is it for this side of the layout. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on the second page. Okay, so we've already got our photos here. We just need to add our elements. And I'm gonna pull them over here. I, n I swear to you, at the end of this video, as soon as I go off air, I'm gonna be like, oh, there it is. There's that thing that I was looking for. It's going to drive me crazy. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Let's go back. I'm all over the place. All right. So this is um, a shimmer brush here. And the shimmer brushes are really cool because they add like a little sparkle and shine. And I thought it would be cool to add it to the grill because, you know, grills are metallic. And I'm just... Brushing over the body of the grill here, and I'll zoom in so you can see it. 
just to give it a little, little something. I love these things. And this is clear. They come in different colors. I like the clear because you can use it on anything. Um, let's lift it up so you can see. I'm going to tilt it. So you see that? Isn't that cool? I love it. That is so cool. Of course, you need to let it dry a couple hours before you actually put in your layout. So I'm going to set that aside. All right, back to page two. So I've already pre-cut my spatula and tongs. I just, I love this stamp set because I just think the images are so stinking cute. They're just so cute. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to put them down like that. Let me use my my uh, glue pen. Just, I just love these. I'm easily entertained. I just, I just think they're so cool. And they also have like the little ketchup. Well, you can make it ketchup or mustard. You know, they made it generic. I love that. Um, the watermelon, the pinwheels. This is the little ketchup thing. You've seen the banner. The barbecue you saw. You saw fire up the grill. You saw. It's just, they're just so. It's just this is such a cute stamp set. So timely. It just makes me want a, a hot dog. And I like my hot dogs burnt. Um, okay. Another little doodad from the mix-ins paper packet that has a little tags. This is for my lamb chops and zucchini. Love that. Lamb pops. We call them lamb lollipops. They are so good. <laughs> Grilled. Oh my gosh. Ah, they're so good. And then I have another tag. This right here, I'm telling you, mac and cheese and ribs. Oh my gosh, you cannot go wrong with that. You still can't go wrong. I'm going to pop it up for emphasis with my pop dots here. Ah, I could go for some <laughs> ribs now. <laughs> ah, I could go for some mac and cheese too. I love crabs being from the from Maryland originally. I love crabs and I was I watch QVC on Sundays because I like in the kitchen with David and the reason I love David Venable because when I first started scrapbooking um, I watched a lot of QVC to get my materials and he used to do the scrapbooking shows back in the day and so I just you know now he does food and I love food and I love to eat so I like watching him and he does his happy dance and I just think it's hilarious. But um, he had on this past Sunday, mac crab mac and cheese. And I was like, I gotta try that. I've never had that. I've had seafood mac and cheese, but just crab mac and cheese with like Old Bay, which I love, oh, I'm like making myself hungry. Okay, so now I'm gonna add these star sequins here, which are part of the Stars and Sparkles uh, collection. And I like to cluster my items in threes because if, if you follow the rule of threes, threes are appealing to the eye. So actually any odd number is appealing to the eye. Um, that's kind of how it's like a brain thing. It's what our brains uh, respond to. So I'm just going to do the same thing over here. But yeah, grilling. In fact, tomorrow I'm going over see some old friends and it's going to be all girlfriends and girl grill master and it's going to be fabulous. Got it up. Somehow I have a piece of cat hair on my stuff. So that means some, some cat has been walking around in my scrapbook materials. I have a cat in here who is taking a nap. Thank God. <laughs> because, oh my goodness. They love to walk on my scrapbook stuff. And there's one thing that's missing. And that is our title. So I'm going to move that. I'm putting my title here. 
and I cut these letters out on Cricut and I've already adhered adhesive using my Xyron. This G was too big to fit in the uh, machine, so I'm going to have to do that manually. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly position, not pressing down yet, my letters. Because I just want to make sure that they're in the right place. I'm satisfied with the positioning. Like I said, if anybody out there uses um, the Gemini to do their metal dies, let me know in the comments how you feel about it because, because I'm starting to use more thin dies. Like I love Cricut, as you all know. I talk about it all the time. You're probably sick of me talking about it. Um, but I am really... I'm really loving stamp sets that have the thin dies like this one. And so while I still am a primary, primarily a Cricut user, I do want to be able to use the thin dies. I, I don't hate the cuddle bug. I just don't like cranking. You know, I like automated stuff. I guess Cricut has spoiled me. I don't like the cranking. Um, so I'm in the, in the market. And like I said, this is my birthday month and I always like to give myself a birthday gift. So I'm in the market. I'm just adding glue to, didn't realize I was off camera. I'm in the market for a die cut machine that is automated. And I've seen the Gemini on, um, HSN. The crafters companion shows and um, you know it's I never really paid attention to it until I started getting a little bit more interested in this the thin cuts and the coordinating stamp sets so if you if you're a Gemini user and you like it or hate it let me just let me know your thoughts I'm interested in the Gemini junior because I don't really need I don't think I need the big one but I don't know maybe you can convince me that I need the big one um, you know, it's the same price as the Cricut, I think, the, the Cricut Maker. And I know the Cricut just came out with their Maker Maker 3 and Explore Air 3. I'm not really in the market for those right now. So, um, yeah, and I don't want to spend another $300 on something. So I, I kind of like the price range of the Gemini, but, you know, convince me. Convince me otherwise. Try. All right, so this is our completed layout. I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit because it doesn't matter. These are just gray. Um, I have, oh, okay, Regan is, <laughs> yeah, David's great. Oh, you have the cuddle bug and the spell binders. Oh yeah, I wish I had held off buying the spell binders. I probably would have gotten a Gemini. Okay, I've seen the spell binders. And again, it's like all the nesting and stuff. I was like, I don't need that. Um, I like, again, I, I'm kind of leaning toward the Gemini, but yeah, any, um, if anybody else wants to share their experiences with that, let me know. In any case, this is the finished layout. Let's go back to real quick. This was the pattern that it was based on from Make It From Your Heart, uh, volume five sketchbook. And... Uh, the papers we're using are the Stars and Sparkles paper packet. That would be this one, this one, and this one. Mixed in with the Mixins paper packet, which is designed to go with any paper packet of the current offering period. So Close to My Heart puts out a catalog every two months. So the May-June Mixins packet has this, this one, and these two. And then it also has a sheet of tags 
this tag here, this one, and this one, which I've been using. I would have shown you the whole paper packet, but because I love it so much, I've just been, there's nothing to see. <laughs> I've used it on so many different things. There's nothing left. Um, we also played with the Stars and Sparkles stamp set here. Um, well, you guys can't see that. Let me do this. Stars and Sparkles stamp set and you'll see a lot of the images from this stamp set I used on the layout to celebrate my love of grilling and it comes with these thin cut dies that coordinate with they're upside down <laughs> that coordinate together so a um, couple of the shapes or a couple of the stamp images coordinate with the shapes here and earlier in the video we did a two versions you can stamp first and then cut it out or you can cut first and then stamp on the image either way works um so that's it that's our that's our summer theme layout um if you are interested in any of the materials uh the paper packets the sequins the stamp set you can get those at cropcandy.net shop let me just put up my url for you um if you're interested in uh, playing around with some sketches from um, Close to My Heart, I have a free ebook available to you. If you go to my website, um, just enter your email and I'll send you the ebook for free so you can play around with that. I give you, uh, I think it's three sketches for scrapbooks pages and three for cards. I'm not really a card person, but I know that a lot of people out there like to make cards, many scrapbookers. Our card makers too. Um, so give those a little whirl. I hope you enjoyed um, today's demo. Like I said, next month, July is all about sketches. So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of content on the blog about um, using sketches and patterns to make your layouts and different, just diving deep into that whole topic. I'm um, really excited about it. And uh, we'll be doing a travel themed page. Um, I'll be showing you some pictures from my Grand Canyon trip a couple of years ago. So look out for that. I do Facebook lives every month, second Friday of the month. And I also cross post it to YouTube. So if you don't catch me here, you can catch the replay on the Facebook page, or you can catch it on my YouTube channel, which is crop candy. All right. I hope you have a great weekend. Spend some time grilling, <laughs> make some ribs for me or grill some or uh, roast some peeps <laughs> instead of marshmallows and have a good day. Oh, if you have any questions, you can always email me at info at cropcandy.net and please tell me about your experiences with the Gemini or any other um, scrapbooking. Let me come back because I'm like talking and you're just looking at a layout. Tell me about your experiences with any of the other um, die cut machines out there, the manual ones or uh, the Geminis, the Spellbinders. I'm sure there are others. I just don't, you know, all I know is Big Shot and Cuddlebug because that's what I, I have. All right. So have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Take care.